Okay, just a real quick explanation. You know, a lot of beginner users of CNC plasma tables, one of the first things they want to do is be able to customize artwork with, you know, family names or someone's name or a saying, you know, a poem, anything, whatever you're looking to do with text. And I wanted to just kind of point out the differences between what I call a positive or a negative. And this is a positive here that you're just using the letters themselves as a standalone. And you notice that the center of the A and the O there, you know, we don't have to worry about what's happening to the center because the entire letter doesn't drop out. Now, one of the things that, that's a little unique about this is that all of the letters are joined together and that's a separate video that I'll be doing in the future on connecting letters together that aren't connected together. The purpose of this video is to show you actually a negative, which is what we did here. Now I, I ship out a lot of stuff on pallets and things and I needed a, a way to get this uh, quickly painted on to outsides of boxes because you know, you don't want artwork getting stacked on top of each other if you know, on pallets on big trucks. Um, and so when you would create a, a stencil type letter, you know, as a sign like this, you have a negative. And if you, if you don't create an individual bridge, the center of this is going to drop out and as evidenced by the D here. And I did left that out on purpose just to kind of show you that we no longer have a center of a D. So let's take a look and let me show you how to do this. It's really quick and easy to do. And we're going to use Inkscape to do this today. All right. So as we as we talk there, we uh, are going to show you how to create the negative text without having the center of certain letters drop out. Now, I'm in Inkscape. Inkscape is a great uh, add-on program for whatever art or CAD program that you use for your plasma table. TrueCut CNC uh, tables come with Bobcad and BobArt. And if, you, if you're a big Bobcad fan, then, you know, this is just an add-on. This is something that I actually keep on the actual plasma computer itself to make quick changes to be able to import and export drawings and change the size of them real quick and that kind of thing so you can see i'm on inkscape version.92 i'm actually right now showing you this on a mac but they make a product for windows as well as linux as we talked about you know you you want to create a a negative <clears throat> some text that would be embedded within an existing piece of artwork or a sign or or whatever rather than a standalone positive letter and there's a few different ways you can do that one the first thing you can do is pick a font as you can see down here at the bottom uh, that is a stencil type of font that every letter already has you know even if the center doesn't drop out of it it already has set up bridges in it to uh, to create the center, you know, to, to prevent the center of letters from dropping out. You can see the R there and the A and so forth. But, you know, you're kind of limited on uh, the, the type of font you can get with that. A lot of times they're very blocky looking, you know, those and, and that kind of thing. But that's certainly an option. Uh, a lot of times a customer may specify a certain font or like this font, you may want something a little more sweeping, artistic, scriptic looking. So let me just show you how to take a regular font. And there's just a few simple steps on on how to actually do that so let me get rid of these real quick and we're going to focus on this one now almost all drawing packages have this concept of objects and paths objects are like geometric shapes it's fonts it's text and then paths are what you can actually cut on your cnc plasma table and you can convert any object to a path and that's the first thing that we're going to do here so we're going to go path object to path and we're just going to change the layer of this to give us a look of what this will look like uh, on our table when we cut it so we're just going to change the layer to outline mode again just showing us kind of like a, a look at what the cut path would be and i'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can work with this a little better all right so you, you see this is all one uh grouping here and the first thing we need to do is be able to work with individual components so what we want to do is go up here to uh, once you have it selected. By the way, let me show you one other thing too. The reason I like Inkscape is if you go here and say open and you drop down and, and pick a list of the type of files that Inkscape can open, look at all this. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of plasma tables will come with something that can only open DXF or just maybe one or two files. But 
look at this you can open any type of file that you can think of that's a vector file or a bitmap file in Inkscape, you know including svg eps adobe illustrator pdfs with vector information you name it you, you can open it up in here and once you get it open and i'm going to click here and go file save as and you see if i drop down drop this down you get kind of the same thing you can save it in all these other formats as well so it gives you a tremendous amount of power with what you can open and close and a lot of flexibility a lot of plasma tables out there you know kind of brag about their uh incorporated software where everything's you know sort of captured within this software but they may not be able to open all these formats so inkscape is kind of a a nice add-on so let me let me get back to showing you this just wanted to mention that real quick so the first thing we want to do is break these letters apart so we can work with them and again the things i'm showing you here are going to be common to other vector software such as illustrator they they work in a similar kind of way the the commands may work a little differently but so we want to go to path since we've already got it uh to, converted to a path we want to say break apart and then we want to go over to object and say ungroup and you see just in that one change we have highlighted dashed lines around each letter now so you can see looking at this the r the a the d the o the o here and the a here they are going to have the same issue where if you if you were to you know turn this into a sign let me just do that real quick just so we get the proper framework so i'm just going to draw a square around this and now this is just you know this would be a sign that we want to cut out in fact the one that you saw me cut at the beginning of the video um, and you can see how easily that when the plasma comes in and goes around this the inside of this o and cuts it out then it's going to come and cut the outside of the o out well the center is just going to drop out of it and you're going to lose it as you saw that we had with the d so let me get rid of that and show you how to actually do this and it's a really quick procedure i'm just going to show you one let one letter but you would repeat that for all the letters so i'm going to come up here and grab a square shape or a rectangle shape and i'm going to pick a dimension that is similar to the uh the width of our of our letters maybe just a little bit smaller um you see our uh the width of each letter here you know it's kind of thin make it a little bit smaller than that first thing we want to do is move this over the center of this letter and in inkscape i'm going to go open this menu here called the align and distribute menu and you see this popped up over on the on the right so you have to select the square that we just made and you have to select the the o and let me move this to demonstrate how this works let me just move it here so if you select the letter that the the shape that we just created and the uh the letter o and come over here and click this it's going to center on the vertical axis and that's really all we need to do you could also center it on the horizontal axis but that's really ir irrelevant on this and from there what you need to do is go path difference and you see we just kind of created our own stencil font using any font that you want you know any, you, you could pick any font in the list and go and go do this procedure to so that's it you know um i'd highly recommend if you've got a true cut cnc table one of the first things our beginner guys do i mean i do a lot of training with with new users on uh, plasma tables mostly true cut tables but i've done some others as well first thing you want to do is how can i take some existing artwork and add text to it but i don't want the centers to fall out this is how you do it so if you're interested in seeing more information about the true cut cnc table check the description of the video there's a link to their website you can see all the different models and be sure to also think about if you're if you're thinking about a diy type of table where you want to do your own think about one of their gantry kits where you can build your own table frame and then use their gantry kit with all the electronics and controller software and all that that goes with it all right guys that's it for this one see ya